That's the national symbol of Uganda, the crested crane, which appears on the country's flag and the coat of arms, of course. But these beautiful birds are now considered endangered as their wetland homes are being lost to farming. There are around 20,000 left in the world. The BBC's Patience Atuer has been to meet communities in Kabali in the southwest of the country as they work to save the crane and the wetlands that it inhabits to protect biodiversity and limit climate change. They are a picture of grace and elegance, a symbol of national pride and cultural significance. But these stunning birds may be one of a few large flocks of crested crane left in this region. As people continue to drain and reclaim swathes of swampland for farming to meet the demands of a growing population, the cranes have limited nesting and breeding spaces. And there are other perils too. The cranes are creatures of habit and they tend to return to the same feeding grounds. Even when the environment around them keeps changing, they try to adapt. But that is a danger to their lives because in some cases, farmers poison them for destroying crops. This scientist has dedicated the last two decades of his work to conservation of the crane. He travels around the region monitoring the birds, counting individual birds, pairs and flocks, and keeping track of their breeding and feeding cycles. They are indicators of environmental health. Where you find them, it, especially where they nest, it means it is still pristine. It is still in its similar to the natural conditions. Maintaining biodiversity is key to regulating greenhouse gases. And wetlands are also said to be the most effective carbon sinks on the planet. Wetlands here in Kabari contain a lot of peat. If you excavate peat and you open it up, it brings out a lot of these greenhouse uh, gases. And uh, you, this is what we are now suffering, which is climate change. You can see Jimmy worked with local communities to restore at least 500 hectares of degraded wetlands. And, he says, the number of cranes has now stabilized. Convincing locals to give up potential farming land has not been easy. But now, some have become crane custodians, keeping an eye on the birds and reporting any that are injured or killed, as well as pairs that have nested or have chicks. And restoring parts of the swamp has brought some economic benefits. We get tourists here now. People come to see how we have restored the swamp. We also get lots of visitors who encourage us to do more to protect the birds, such as cranes. We can now also harvest materials from the swamp, which we use to make household items like baskets and mats. Beyond loss of habitat, there are other threats. In some cases, the cranes are caught as trophy birds, their wings clipped to tame them and prevent them from returning to the wild or even breeding. Uganda has already lost over 40% of its wetlands in the last two decades. So, in some parts of the country, it may be too late for the cranes. But Jimmy is determined to continue his fight to save these beautiful birds. Patience at Heire, BBC News, southwestern Uganda.